Great crowd. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to, so I have a background in hardware. Um, I've done CPUs for over 25 years. Um, I can completely relate with uh, the panel discussion. CPUs are here. We build um, AI. I work for Tensorrent. Uh, we are an AI hardware software systems company, and we build AI using RISC-5. And our RISC-5 runs Linux, um, the greatest operating system I've worked on. So one of the things I want to spend time talking about um, is as we build uh, our hardware, software, and systems, a key thing keeps coming over and over. In order for AI to be more prevalent, it has to be built on open systems. Uh, it has to be built on not just open software, but it has to be built on open hardware. And that's fundamentally why we ended up uh, with RISC-V. So RISC-V is an open standard, and I'm going to talk about that briefly. But before we go there, a quick introduction. Um, so we are an investor-funded company, about 1,000 people. Um, we have some great investors, a couple of them right here in Korea. Uh, our, we are headquartered in Santa Clara in California. Uh, and we are doing AI using RISC-V. Uh, quick segue, what exactly do we do? So we do IP, which is CPU IP AI accelerators. Uh, we use that IP to build our chips, our chiplets, um, our developer cards. Uh, we are, our primary strategy to deploy AI is to go through developers. Uh, they do great for us. Um, our developer systems are entirely based on software, uh, which is open source. So our software stack has multiple entry points, whether it's at a MLI or based compiler, all the way to a low level metal stack. And it's all open source. And that's, um, that's the reason why we are really excited about partnering here and, and being here. Um, let me talk a little bit about RISC-5. Um, how many people have heard of RISC-5? Right, so it's an open standard. It's not open source. It's a standard uh, on, about instruction set architecture. That's what's used to implement um, everything from embedded designs to high performance cores that are used for AI and HPC. Uh, came out of Cal Berkeley about 15 years ago. Uh, there is uh, an organization called RISC-V International, which coordinates, which is largely an open community, uh, innovations in the architecture. So what new extensions have to go in, what new instructions have to come in. How do we get RISC-V, which is an open standard, to be at the same level as the prevalent CPU um, ISOs, like whether it's x86 or ARM? Uh, on the same lines, there's um, another organization called RISE, which is focused maniacally on improvement of software stack. Now, there's still some ways to go, but at this point, most major Linux distros have been ported over to RISC-V. Uh, there's a huge amount of effort that's gone into stack, whether it's for automotive, whether it's for HPC. Um, Android, as an ecosystem, is developed and is being developed on RISC-V. But that breaks the question. What does it take for an open standard to succeed? Uh, and there are multiple views. And in my view, we have really good open designs that are available um, for RISC-5. Uh, we have great open source, openly available verification environments. And we certainly have a lot of architectural tools, um, like SAIL and Spike and RISPR and, uh, and a bunch of others. Uh, and in addition to that, we have most critical software already ported over to RISC-5. But there's one key thing that's lacking. When somebody has to deploy um, a standard, they're looking for a solution. And in order to have a solution, it's really important to have high performance hardware and a system that's available for developers to build on. And in, in our opinion, that's a big gap right now in the RISC-5 community. And my talk is going to largely focus on that. So the way we enable this, and I'm really excited about this, the way we enable the RISC-V ecosystem is we release open source um, design. So Ocelot is a, a CPU that's entirely based on the Boom core that came out of Berkeley. Uh, it introduces a high performance vector unit that's compliant with RISC-V vector extensions, um, the, the RVV 1.0. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, what we've realized is in order for the broader adoption of RISC-V. Really what we need to do is give the tools to not just us, but a lot of other, whether it's companies or developers out there, that can use an entire solution for RISC-V. And the key things that are missing, if you're building 
a system around RISC V. You need to be able to debug it. You need to have an IDE for it. Um, if you're building a more complex system, you need to have some notion of power management control. And Linux does a great job. Linux kernel has um, a lot of hooks for power management. But also, you need to provide all these small bells and whistles. How do we interface with other pieces, including AI accelerators? How do we connect multiple CPUs together? And to do that, there's a whole collateral of system IPs that's needed. And I'm excited to say that we are starting to open source that. Our mission is to get the, the essentially the boat that lifts everybody. We want to make sure that we have collateral that can bring everybody into the space to build high performance designs. And we'll briefly talk about uh, just the debug solution. So if anybody has debugged on a board or an FPGA, um, on a system, on a server, uh, you really start with trying to figure out what the trace is. And in order to get to that information, you need a lot of hardware capabilities. And it doesn't make sense, really, in our mind, for everybody to go build out the same thing over and over again. So instead, what we want to do is provide this to the broader RISC V community to go and start using this. Uh, the great part is this is silicon proven. We use this in, in our own high performance silicon, and we are making it available to anybody who wants to use it. And it's got a number of components. It's got a logic analyzer. Uh, you can do signal trace, instruction dumping. Uh, it's a huge help as people start to coalesce around building more systems over RISC V. And that's just not it. In addition to that, we do a lot of infrastructure. So we are planning to open source vast majority of this, including reference platforms, uh, because, again, this allows whether you're a student or you are a large company building systems on top of RISC V to essentially take this in, from the open source domain and build stuff on top of it. We do not want people to spend time sort of going through the same nuts and bolts over and over again. We want more innovation on RISC V. And the way to do that is provide the basic building blocks that are accessible to everybody. Um, and going the open source route is by far the best way to do it. A um, Couple of key things. Uh, one thing I want to point out is we recently released uh, an entire stimulus generator, including test, for RISC V compliance. So anybody who's working on RISC V, if you're trying to build your small you know, RV32 based core or a large RV62 based core, whether it's for embedded cores, whether it's just for an FPGA, you can just download this. Um, there are about 20,000 different test cases, including source code, that you can deploy and validate your designs. And what this allows us to do is take all of this collateral, put it together, along with open source available RISC V based CPUs, and run real world software on it. As soon as you can get to this, it certainly opens a possibility for open standards like RISC-V to go into a vast majority of systems, not just remain relegated to things like embedded microcontrollers, but go build AI CPUs on it, build AI accelerators on it, build HPC systems, and someday maybe a top 500 supercomputer. Uh, and the ISA itself is there. We just want to make sure there are enough things around the ISA, implementations available, for people to go and deploy on those. So here's a quick history of what we open source, and this is going to grow exponentially over the next couple of years, um, from verification environments to architectural tools to actual design components, and we will add to this. Uh, we'll introduce things like interrupt controllers, uh, essential for any system. We're, we're going to introduce things like memory management units, again, essential to any system that we want to use it. And all of this kind of builds together um, something that we're going to launch in, uh, in a couple of quarters. These are developer platforms. These are high-performance, CPU-based developer platforms that put RISC-V, all the collateral we are talking about, on a piece of silicon that we will make accessible and available to developers. Um, if you talk to anybody who's building a tool chain, whether it's GCC or LLVM, one of their biggest concerns right now with RISC-V is there's nothing that's available in public domain that allows people to build, to run CI. You know, CI takes 12 hours on existing systems. Our goal is to reduce that time significantly so people can actually start building on these systems. Um, it's based on a design called Ascalon, which is our highest performance RISC-V core, um, and especially when it releases. Uh, it's available right now, for, so we license it as in the form of an IP, but we are really excited about the silicon. We want to get this in the hands of as many people as possible. To kind of sum it up, um, the only way for an open standard to succeed is to go build with open source components uh, to allow it so that multiple people can end up using it. And 
Now, whether it's a, an individual developer or a large company, uh, you kind of own your silicon future if you end up doing that. Thank you.